Hi, this is Don McAllister, and welcome to the 500th edition of Screencasts Online for Mac. Well, you're probably well aware of Apple's decision to scrap both iPhoto and Aperture and replace them both with a brand new photo management application called Photos. Photos was announced last year and has spent the last few months in beta. Apple finally released Photos to the general public in OS X 10.10.3, as well as introducing iCloud Photo Library as a fully supported service. So in this week's show, I'm going to take a look at both Photos and iCloud Photo Library on the Mac, initially looking at the setup and migration of your photos, following on next week with a look at actually using Photos. Across in Safari, I've just opened up the um, the hero page for photos on the Apple website. Unusually, you don't download and install photos. It actually comes as part of the base operating system. So once you've upgraded to 10.10.3, you will actually have photos installed on your Mac. Uh, you do need to run it and set it up though. So although it's installed on your Mac, I will run through the setup process to start the migration process if you're an existing iPhotos or Aperture user. Now it is a version one product. Uh, I fully expect to see new releases building on this initial release. And Apple's approach seems to be, as we've seen with Pages, uh, with Numbers, even Final Cut Pro 10, is to actually start again from scratch. Some of these legacy applications, they're basically ripping them up, starting again from scratch, and building a solid foundation to add in functionality later. And we may well see Apple open up the Photos API to allow third party to create plugins for photos eventually, but uh, not at this first release. So who is it for? It's primarily for non-professionals. I know there's been lots of teeth gnashing about the, uh, the removal of Aperture, and some of the more complex or some of the more sophisticated features of Aperture have actually disappeared. They've gone away. So professionals probably do need to have a look at some alternatives, such as Lightroom. Now, I was an Aperture user, but in all honesty, I never really used the more advanced features, such as brushes. Um, and photos, in my experience uh, of using it at beta and the current release, seems to be just fine for sort of my limited needs. Photos does include a wealth of adjustments to allow you to tweak your photos, either automatically or using some manual controls, but we'll have a look at that probably next week when we look at photos in more depth. Now, using both Aperture or iPhoto, I also really had a problem with my workflows. I was never able to establish a workflow I was entirely happy with. I'd end up with several different versions of images on my iPhone or iPad, and also on the Mac as well. And I was never really 100% confident that everything was consolidated into either Aperture or iPhoto. To compound the problem, as well as the photos and videos I take with my iPhone, I've also recently started to take photos and videos with a mirrorless micro four thirds camera. And being able to manage these extra photos and videos across devices was also very troublesome. Now the solution to these workflow issues in photos is its deep integration with iCloud Photo Library, allowing you to use iCloud as the main repository for all your images and potentially videos and have them accessible from all your devices. If you make an adjustment on one device, then that change is propagated across all your devices. Now you can use photos in isolation, but for me, iCloud Photo Library seems to be the answer to all my workflow issues, albeit at a price. But let's start by taking a look at a typical installation of photos and how to migrate a single iPhoto or Aperture Library across. So on my Mac, I already have 10.10.3 installed. And in my pictures folder, you see I have two libraries, one called iPhoto Library and one called SEO Master. This SEO Master one is the one that I really work with a lot. And this one is 50 gigabytes. iPhoto Library is just sort of like a temporary library that I have um, with some photos that I'm still working on. Now, the one I'm going to migrate to photos initially is SEO Master. And just a word of warning that uh, this is currently on my system drive in my pictures folder. If you do want to have the photos library on an external drive or on a different partition, the uh, best thing to do would be to move it at this stage because when you convert, it will actually create uh, a duplicate of your library and uh, you're really best creating that where you want its final place to be. You can move it later. It's just a little bit uh, time consuming, but I'll show you that. But for now, let's have a look at the structure of this SEO master file. So let's just say this is our, our master, either iPhoto or Aperture Library. Now, a couple of years ago, Apple did unify the library structure so that it can be opened with both Aperture and iPhoto. And what I will do, actually, let's open this one up in iPhoto first. If I control the right click, say open with iPhoto. I just really want to show you the, uh, the structure 
of the images that are in here. So I've got three events, Iceland event, a Munich event, and an India event. And down here you'll see under events, I've got 2014. So I have a folder, and within that folder there is an event called Iceland, and then there are some albums in here, day one, day two, day three, etc. I've got a separate event here for Munich, and then I've got another folder for 2015, and then in there, um, another event called India, and then within India there are some albums, landscapes, and on the road. So a fairly structured uh, way of organizing my photos, just the way I like to keep them. I can collapse those up if I want to. Uh, let me close this down. So that's in iPhoto. If I close iPhoto down and open the same library up in Aperture, let's this time we'll say Aperture, in Aperture, you'll see exactly the same structure. So uh, rather than events, I've actually got projects down here. So I've got my two folders for both years, 2014. I've got my Iceland uh, project with these albums here. I've also got my Munich project. And then in 2015, I've got India. And within India, I've got various albums, landscapes, and on the road. So they both look identical. Um, so you can either be an Aperture user or an iPhoto user. The process of migration is exactly the same. Now, before we actually do the migration, it is worth taking some time to uh, prune or to organize your library before the migration. Uh, such thing as removing duplicates, uh, perhaps organizing into projects and albums. Uh, the structure will actually be replicated across into photos. So uh, if you want to spend some time in either iPhoto or Aperture now, uh, you can do. Now, one consideration if you have organized your photos into multiple libraries is that if you do intend to bring across those images into Photos and iCloud Photo Library, uh, you probably want to have a look at merging the libraries together before you do the migration. Now, that's easy to do for Aperture users. You can actually merge libraries together quite easily. Uh, iPhoto users, there's no built-in merge, but you can use an application or a third-party utility uh, called iPhoto Library Manager. Now, I've covered that before, but it's a $30 utility that allows you to merge your iPhoto libraries together and uh, this really needs to be done prior to migration to photos. Now, there is a way to migrate multiple libraries on a one-by-one -one basis, but it's fairly time-consuming. But if you do intend to have all your photos migrated across to iCloud Photo Library, you really do want to consider merging your libraries at this point. But I will actually show you how to do it on a one-by-one -one basis later. Now, one final thing I'm going to do with my particular library is I'm actually going to remove all the video clips from it. Previously, when I've imported from an SD card from my Micro Four Thirds camera, it was a combination of both 4K video clips and also uh, RAW and JPEG images. Now, I'm quite happy synchronizing the uh, JPEG and RAW images with iCloud Photo Library, but the 4K video clips are quite large. And what I've decided is rather than having the individual clips in the library, I'll actually edit those clips into a finished movie and then uh, sort of re-encode it and then just publish the finished video to the iCloud Photo Library. It's going to save me a ton of space. So to identify those uh, videos, in fact, what I will do is rather than the India Library, if I go back up to Photos, and then within Photos, I'll create a new Smart Album, and then I'll just basically add a rule. Uh, file type is a video, and that will give me a Smart Album. So I'll just call this Videos just so I know what it is. And then what I will do is I will export these videos. Actually, while we're looking at this export feature, you could use the same technique, uh, that of making a smart uh, album and exporting it. You see at the bottom here, smart album as new library. If you wanted to extract, say, just your JPEG files from your library and perhaps just use the JPEGs to import into uh, photos. But I'm going to go ahead and just export the versions of these movie files, these large movie files, so I can actually delete them from this particular library. So everything that's in that particular album, uh, I'll export as versions because I'll probably want to import it into Final Cut Pro or something similar. I'll create a new folder, call this 4K video. I mean, this is an optional process. You don't have to do this if you've got relatively small size video clips in your library, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and export these versions and show alert when finished. Okay, so that's uh, now exporting. Uh, it's 208 video clips, so that's quite a lot of space or quite a lot of storage it would require if I was to upload it to iCloud uh, Photo Library. If I just tap on here, we can see the progress. Whoops, let me do that again. There we go. 
Right, so 218 to be exported. Um, once they have exported, I'll just make doubly sure that they're okay. I'll back them up somewhere else as well, and then I'll delete them from this particular library and then clear the trash. And that should reduce the size of the library file considerably. So I'll come back when that's completed. Right, so the export has completed. I've actually just double checked. They've all exported fine. I've copied them somewhere else. So basically, if I just do a command A, and control backspace to delete them. Uh, we sure we want to move the selection to the trash. Yes, we'll say move to trash. If we go across to the trash, control right click, empty aperture trash. Uh, there are some other photos in there I've deleted previously, but we'll say delete. All right, that should reduce the size of the file considerably. Uh, one other thing I'll show you as well, by the way, in fact, we already have some rated uh, photos. These are star rated. You will lose the star ratings. There's no star rating system in photos, but they will be converted to keywords. And that's true also of colored labels. So if you've uh, tagged anything with colored labels, they will be converted to keywords. But now that that's finished, if I just close this down, so let's quit Aperture. And let's go back across to the Finder. And let's open up my pictures folder and let's see how that big right so that's gone from 50 gigabytes down to 6.36 gigabytes uh, which is a bit more manageable now now you there is no real limit I mean my main um, master library across on my Mac Pro uh, was actually I think 247 gigabytes and I converted that uh, yesterday it's still uploading although I've temporarily switched that off for now but it took about 45 minutes to convert the library, uh, but it will take uh, you know, a lot longer to upload that amount of data if you're going to use the iCloud Photo Library. But I think we're now ready to have a go. So let's go ahead and uh, have a go at running photos for the first time. To get the full version of this tutorial completely for free, as well as immediate access to over 500 other Apple-related tutorials, all you need to do is visit seofree.com to register for your 14-day, no obligation, free trial Screencasts Online membership. So that's seofree.com to register for your 14-day free trial membership.